Welcome back to another episode of Big Red's Isopods. This week I'm going to be showing you guys uh, uh, one of my Spanish species, Porcelio um, Boulevari. And we're going to take a look at it and do a little bit of a care guide. So let's go take a look. So Porcelio Boulevari is probably one of uh, the most sought after Spanish isopods. Um, they are a really pretty color. They have an almost translucent look to them with a yellow coloration on the back. It almost makes them look like a skeleton. Um, as you can see, I do have quite a few in here. I'll quickly flip this over. And they do get fairly large. Like uh, some of the bigger Spanish species, these ones are really, really quick, but they're also really cool to look at. Now, I really like them due to the fact that these ones seem to breed, like I did start off with quite a few more of these than I normally do, but they seem to breed on a relatively quick basis. There's not a lot of waiting period, like some of the other larger Spanish species. They, uh, they do take a little bit to get established, I'd say, but for the most part, they breed really quick. Um, if there was any Spanish species that I would suggest for a bioactive enclosure, it would probably be these guys because they do have quite the diet, like quite the, quite the strong hunger, I guess you'd say or they, they will eat quite a bit of different things. Everything I've seen to give them, they seem to just eat right up, no problem. The only thing I would have to worry about with these ones is as you can see here, right over here is a perfect example, they will climb this the sides of this plastic container. It's pretty slippery surface, and almost every other isopod, exactly every other isopod I have, as far as I know, cannot climb this surface. But for some reason, Bolivari can climb a super slick surface. I mean, I do have where I put the tape on the side, guys. It is, it is really got a lot of grip there. And you will see isopods that if I have a leaf that's leaning up against it, they can climb onto there and they'll hold onto here. But they'll slip when they get near the top. Where with Bolivari, as you can see here, I had to use some sparkling super glue because that's all the store had at the time but I needed some way to keep it and then some foam to keep a block along the top here because they were getting out and uh, I did find a few of them stuck to some of the other bin tops so I knew that it was a problem. Other than that these guys are very voracious they will eat pretty much anything you put in here. This guy's just chewing on some bark down over here. Take a look at him. Um, they are very hardy, but another thing about them that I found quite neat is I saw a video a while back about how most Spanish species do like it to be relatively dry, where Bolivari does enjoy the moisture. Uh, I have quite a high moisture gradient in here. I'd say at least half the container has moisture in it. I just moisturize the one side, like I spray down the one side and let it run underneath through the soil but I do put quite a bit more um, water in this container compared to some of the other Spanish species. I make sure it's got quite a high moisture gradient. And then, as you can see, they are quite an interesting isopod. I really like the fact that they have the almost rib-like spines sticking out the side of each one of their segments. Kind of gives them an almost skeleton-like look, which is really, really cool. Um, for their appetite, they will eat uh, both vegetables and protein. I feed them the fish food and I feed them any vegetables. A lot of the other Spanish species don't seem to be too keen on the vegetables. They do enjoy having some, but these uh, really like to eat anything you put in here. It's almost always gone. Uh, there's not a lot that I see left over after feeding these. Uh, they do have quite the difference in size 
uh, female to male ratio. As you can see in here, there's a couple of the guys with the longer tails. The ones that are really long, like this fellow over here, and a couple in the back, those are the males. And the females just have the little short spikes, like this one over here. So it's really interesting in that manner because then you can tell the difference between the two. And just like some of the other large Spanish species, you do have to give them a lot more space and room to move around because the females do hold on to their, their brood a lot longer than, uh, or their mancai a lot longer than um, some of the other Porcelio species do. There's quite a few of the Porcelios where as soon as the, the mancai are ready to go, they just drop them on the ground, they're done with them. Where I've heard, and I do believe that the uh, Spanish, a lot of the larger Spanish species will kind of let their bunkai go around and, and eat some stuff off the soil and then they'll kind of collect them back up onto their abdomen or their bellies and then they'll continue about over to another area to let them roam around again for a little bit. Uh, and another reason why I think this would be a, a relatively good species for um, a bioactive setup is the fact that they are both fast and they really like to hide and they can fit in a lot of spaces that a lot of other things can't. They're so flat that they could just squeeze in between spaces that your reptiles would never be able to find them. As long as you had some sort of, um, of rocky terrain or bark just like this there would be no problem or even leaves if you had a lot of leaf litter i don't think your reptiles would be able to eat them all up and they breed relatively quick as you can see here there's multiple different sizes of monkai in here there's some that are a couple weeks old some that are a week old and i think that they would have no problem being in a bioactive setup. They are relatively pricey due to the fact that they are a Spanish species and all the Spanish species are relatively pricey. But I think that you could potentially use them. If you wanted a Spanish species, a large one, uh, to keep in some sort of bioactive setup, this is probably one of your best bets. There might be some other ones that could be better, but in my personal opinion, this is probably the one I would use. Um, for all the reasons I listed and the fact that they're just so cool. How could you not? They're <laughs> the little skeleton looking bugs uh, roaming around. It's, see there's a male right there. You can tell because of the size of his, uh, I can't remember the name right now. I'd have to look it up for you guys, but you could look it up yourselves. The size of his tail is really how you can tell the difference between the males and the females. As you can see, these ones are long, like long horns where the females are like tiny little spikes about half the size if not less so that's one of the main reasons uh or one one of the main ways you can tell the difference between the two well here's an example of a female over here as you can see her spikes are about half the size even though she's larger or older than the other one they're only little tiny spikes on the end of her tail there and they they don't seem to be too terribly uh, frightened. As you can see, I stuck my finger right out over to her and she smelt it, walked away like it was nothing. Where a lot of the other Spanish species, as soon as you get close to them, they just freak right out and they run away. And a lot of them, or all of them that I've seen, run extremely fast. There's not a single Spanish species I know of that's slow running. They're just bolt. As soon as they uh, get any sense of danger or anything, they're gone. They're just right across from one side of the container to the other. As a hobbyist isopod, this is basically one that everybody's gonna wanna have in their collection or you need to have in your collection because it's such a classic isopod. Anybody who deals with isopods, they have this isopod. Any isopod merch that you could buy out there from different YouTubers or uh, websites like businesses, they're gonna have this isopod on something somewhere in their name in their brand these are just such a classic isopod so easy to take care of for a spanish species if you want a beginner spanish species i would highly suggest these ones there are some better ones out there but if you want to go for a more difficult one and you're trying your hand at something uh, these ones would be a great one to use 
But then just again be aware to, of the fact that they are escape artists. Other people have said otherwise, but I really find that these particular ones are real escape artists. I've had so many get out that I thought that I was going to have some sort of major loss where I might not be able to keep the culture. So that's why I quickly added the foam around here. But um, I've kept them in here. They're being relatively okay. As you can see, there's still a lot of healthy adults in there. And yeah, it's they're, they're doing really awesome and I'm, I couldn't be happier with them. They bred almost right away as soon as I had them. They've had no major health problems that I've known of and they just seem to be just one of the coolest isopods ever. As you can see, I kind of startled her there, but I could probably pick one of these up for you guys, no problem. I just don't want to because of the fact that they, if they did get scared, they would just zoom right off and I would never be able to catch them. They're really, really fast. All the Spanish are. So I tend not to handle my Spanish too much. I don't have a problem handling some of the other larger species, but is when it comes to the Spanish and their skittishness, uh, I keep that uh, to a minimum. So in conclusion, Porcelia Bolivari, fantastic isopod to have, whether you wanna have them in your collection or whether you wanna use them as a bioactive setup. I think that it would be a fantastic isopod to try for a bioactive setup. There's not a lot out there. I would suggest this is definitely one of the ones that I would be willing to give a shot, especially out of the Spanish species. Uh, there's a lot more that are a little bit more expensive than him. Uh, he's not the, they're not the cheapest isopod out there by no means, but if you wanted to use a large Spanish species for a bioactive setup, it's definitely one I would consider. Not only the fact that they're just so beautiful that you're gonna wanna have them in your collection, but the fact that you could put them in a bioactive setup just makes them a great isopod for you to have. Whether you're an, a hobbyist like me, or a breeder, or whatever else you are, if you want a Spanish, a large Spanish species of isopod, I would definitely suggest getting the Bolivaris. Um, the pictures and the video was proof for itself. You decide whether or not you think it's a beautiful isopod. I sure as heck believe it is, but you guys be the judge of that yourselves. All right, till next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again next week. Bye.